podcast from the Ellen Music Shop. I'm recorder player Mary Janet Lee, and in this series I'll be inviting you to share the secrets of my life as a professional early musician. Over the next few weeks I'll be chatting about all sorts of topics, including the challenges of running an early music ensemble, how we bring early music to new audiences online during the pandemic, and of course in the future. I'm a music historian as well as a performer, so I'll also be exploring the history of the instruments we use to play early music, as well as finding out what it was like to be a musician hundreds of years ago. I'm really looking forward to guest appearances from my friends and colleagues who will have new and fascinating perspectives on the early music world today. Now, some of you might recognise me from the London International Festival of Early Music from the Young Ensemble Competition, which took place in December in Leafy Blackheath. My group Ensemble Hesbury were delighted to be awarded f joint first prize with the wonderful vocal group Ensemble Pro Victoria. So today I'm going to chat to our harpsichordist Thomas Allery, um, who also happens to be my husband very conveniently for this podcast. And we're going to reminisce a little bit about the competition and the experience. Um, so Tom, it was a little bit of a strange one um, doing a competition under pandemic um, yeah. times. How did you feel about that? Well, it was a little bit strange. It was actually really nice just to be doing a kind of live performance. Although it was actually filmed, of course, for the audience, we still had the experience of actually travelling to Blackheath, um, rehearsing, warming up, and then performing. And we were performing in front of real live judges. Um, sadly, not in front of a real audience, but at least yeah. it, was actually a, it was an occasion to be doing it, which kind of felt a little bit weird. It felt a bit out of practice. On that. Yeah, it felt... It didn't feel normal anymore to be, you know, just packing and taking all your things and 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 rehearsing and performing. Which so it really it was it was a wonderful wonderful opportunity, um, and the filming was quite incredible, wasn't it? Filming was amazing actually. When we went into the studio, it was really like a film set. Uh, lots of professional lighting and quite a big crew actually of, of people filming and lots of different camera angles. Um, you can still catch the performance I think on the website. So you'll see it's very beautifully edited together with. Lots of different uh, angles, quite a buzz, really. No, really, it was it was a, a wonderful experience, and also um, for a lot of challenges actually, because uh, we had to perform socially distanced, um, which of course is something that we're still getting used to. Um, what kind of challenges does, does that bring up for you, Tom? Well, we often think a lot about how we're positioned in a particular venue. Um, we sometimes, you know, play around with exactly the angle the harpsichord goes, for example, so we can. Um, really be kind of in the best possible way of uh, seeing each other, matching gestures, and so we can hear and see. Um, so I like to be particularly, of course, in close contact with the harpsichord um, with Florence on um, on the cello for playing the continuo line, and Magda and Mary Janet, of course, often interacting and imitating each other. And we, yeah. we rely a lot on our peripheral vision, on listening, on watching, of course, on what we've rehearsed, and communicating through so many different ways. and. Um, that's why we like to be quite close, really, for matching musical gestures. But it was, yeah. it was quite a challenge to be far so, away. So suddenly, you know, just putting even a little bit of extra distance between between us does make things quite a lot more difficult. Um, so we've we've really grown as musicians um, as a result of, mm. of, of doing that. Um, and of course, that looks to continue for a little while. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, it was a really wonderful day. Uh, gr wonderfully organised. Um, we were looked after so well, and um, the church was very warm. And it was a real boost for the ensemble. Um, and of course, uh, I think we're going to be performing, fingers crossed, at the Autumn um, Lifan Festival yes. um, as our prize. Yes, so, do, do come and join us then if you can. That's going to be wonderful. We're looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. So, I think it's time for a bit of music. My ensemble plays a lot of Scottish early music, so here's a recording of three traditional Scots tunes arranged by the composer Francesco Brasanti. Brasanti was an Italian musician who spent at least eight years of his working life in Edinburgh, where he worked for the thriving Edinburgh Musical Society as a performer, teacher and copyist. In the 1740s, many Scottish and Italian composers were actually taking Scotch tunes and arranging them, adding often a figured bass um, in an attempt to preserve them and also uh, to make them more suitable for performance in formal concerts in Edinburgh's fashionable new town. Barzanti's 1742 publication, a collection of old Scots tunes, is really skillful and fantastic to play. Uh, today's recording uh, includes three tunes, The Lass of Pity's Mill, 
Pinky House and also Clout the Cauldron, which we recorded last year at the Temple Church in London. this first episode of Pitpoint. If you'd like to follow me and Ensemble Hesbury, head to our website or social media channels. We've got plenty of music videos on YouTube for you to enjoy. On Wednesdays at the moment we also have a lunchtime concert series, Bite Size Brock, at 1pm UK time and we usually perform for about half an hour with music and live chat, so we'd love to see you there. And of course if you've got any ideas for our podcast just drop me a line. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Next week, I'm going to be talking about my own recorders and demonstrating some of the ones I play most 
and also exploring their different sounds. I'll also be telling the story of my very first trip to the early music shop to buy my first wooden recorder, age 10. See you next time. Thank you.